Ask yourself a basic question about network integrity. You guys talked about the Russia hoax nonstop. The FBI was investigating talked, it. The FBI talked, was investigating it, we, so, we, so we recovered them. And so you took the words of unnamed FBI agents and put them on your network as if they were the gospel truth. You did it again and again. A viewer of your network would have believed that Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin conspired in 2016. No. That was totally and preposterously false. No. Well, that's what you just said why. is false. We covered an FBI investigation. I don't know why you want to talk about the FBI investigation. You covered it in a way that gave credence to anonymous sources, accusations. You did it yourself. Your network did it, Jake. But again, can we talk about the issues that Americans care most about? I'm talking about about things that Donald Trump has said. Yes. If you have an an issue with whether or not he's talking about the economy enough, that's between you and your running mate. I'm talking about things he has said this week. Every single rally that he does, he talks about how he wants to unleash American energy so we can lower the cost of groceries. He talks about the fact that housing has become unaffordable. He talks about the wide open border, Jake. Kamala Harris and her allies, you know, it's interesting. Kamala Harris and her media allies, and I would put CNN in this category. You guys, they wouldn't. You guys seem to care. I'll tell you that. They wouldn't. Well, they should watch your network more because you guys seem to care more about Donald Trump's past than the future of the American people. This campaign on making of the American dream. I'm specifically affordable. asking about how Donald Trump is going to be president in the future should he win. And then we're being told we're, he's going to pursue economic policies that lower the cost of groceries and make life more affordable again. He talks about it every single day on the campaign trail, and so do I. What you're talking about is is a, an anonymously sourced story or one guy Nothing who anonymously sourced. or who Zero one guy cent. one guy who is a disgruntled employee I told where you, five ten, other ten people, people five other people. people pushed back against him and said that what he said was dishonest so why don't we talk about the policy that's affecting american citizens and not what donald trump allegedly said according to one guy who's pissed off cuz he got fired by donald trump I- US News publication is reporting Kamala Harris is ghosting Joe Biden on the campaign trail as she tries to distance herself from the Biden administration. Meanwhile, her aspiring deputy, Tim Walz, has accused Donald Trump of trying to copy the Nazis. Sky News Washington correspondent Annalise Nielsen is on the ground in Somerset, Pennsylvania, one of the most important battleground states this election. Annalise, Donald Trump appears to have packed out Madison Square Garden. Look, people have been lining up all day and the pictures we're starting to see from inside ahead of this event looks like every single seat is taken. We know Donald Trump can draw a big crowd, especially when he shows up on time as he's been getting later and later for his events. People have been fitting out in the crowds, but they know this is a big one. They want to have that big, successful presentation ahead of the last week of campaigning. It's the same reason we're going to see Kamala Harris in Washington, D.C., where she knows she can pull a big crowd as well. What we're 
we're not seeing on the campaign trail is Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. As you referenced before, this report was from Axios that Kamala Harris has been ghosting the, campaign, the Biden administration, that Joe Biden's put a few days in his calendar to be out on the campaign, and they simply haven't eventuated because they are concerned that he's not helping her election prospects. What they have done also as they hone in their attacks on Donald Trump has taken this particular line of attack against Donald Trump having an event in Madison Square Garden. Now, multiple conventions for both Republicans and Democrats have been held at Madison Square Garden. Previous presidents have held events at Madison Square Garden. JFK's birthday was there when Marilyn Monroe famously sung Happy Birthday, Mr. President. But the one comparison that the Harris campaign is drawing the, uh, to is the uh, event held by Nazis in 1939, these were American sympathizers with the cause called the Bund, and they had that very controversial event there. Tim Walls is saying that this is the same thing. Go do your Google on this. Donald Trump's got this big uh, rally going at Madison Square Garden. There's a direct parallel to a big rally that happened in the mid-1930s at Madison Square Garden. And, and don't think that he doesn't know for one second exactly what they're doing. Kamala Harris and Donald Trump remain tied in the polls, which means pretty much every major swing state like Pennsylvania, where we are right now, is a toss up. Whoever wins will get all of those electoral college votes. So it could be a decisive win, but it's down to every single vote to decide who gets these states. That's why we've seen such a ramp up in rhetoric from these campaigns. Here was Michelle Obama in Michigan last night. I hope you'll forgive me if I'm a little frustrated that some of us are choosing to ignore Donald Trump's gross incompetence while asking Kamala to dazzle us at every turn. I, I hope that you'll forgive me if I'm a little angry that we are indifferent to his erratic behavior, his obvious mental decline, his history as a convicted felon. Over the last eight years, Donald Trump has become more confused, more unstable, and more angry. And it is clear he has become increasingly unhinged. But the last time, at least there were people who could control him. But notice, they're not with him this time. Look, Kenny, with the Electoral College being what it is in America, some votes matter more than others. Some of the votes here in Pennsylvania are the most valuable in the country. So we've been out talking to voters today. There is still a very devoted following of Donald Trump here. And people who were trying to make up their mind, uh, potentially considering the Democrats, and still very decided that they wanted to support Donald Trump, mostly because of the economy. I'm going to vote, and I'm going to vote for Trump. I can't say I like him, but when he was in there before, he done a pretty good job. Much better than Biden ever did. Kamala said that she's not, do, do, not going to do anything different she did with Biden. That tells me right there that, hey, she is Biden all the way, and I don't think she's going to change things. In fact, if anything, she's going to destroy us. And Kenny, the other interesting statistic that's come through today is 40 million Americans have cast an early ballot so far. That's a drastic increase of Republicans casting their ballot early. So a good indicator that this will be just as tight as the polls suggest. Annalise, thank you. And as, as Annalise has been saying, uh, these are the live pictures coming in from Madison Square Garden, where Donald Trump is expected to speak shortly. Uh, this is a tight race to the White House. It's expected to come down to the wire. And as soon as Donald Trump begins speaking, we'll take you back to New York City for some of that.